بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله we have توفيق to start our third majlis for Abu Abdullah alayhi salam in Muharram 1444 August 2022 our topic in this Muharram, as you know, is Imam Mahdi Jalallah Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif. And we are continuing our study of Imam Mahdi in Islamic scholarship. In the first night, we talked about the connection between Imam Mahdi and Imam Hussein, alayhim as -salam and then we talked about love of imam mahdi sharif for people uh, in the second session we continued this discussion and now inshallah we want to again build upon what we have discussed and go further into different uh, aspects of love of Imams in general and Imam Mahdi Sharif in particular for all people and an additional way for believers and for true Shia. One of the things that we find in our hadith is that Imams السلام, have a special connection with people and in particular with their Shia which is existential which is a spiritual it's not through receiving reports only they do receive reports but they have existential connection like for example mothers many times have this feeling that no matter where their children are far or near if their children are in trouble they feel something in their heart no one has told them anything but there's existential relation between mother and the child. Some mother have this in a much stronger way. But I think all mother have this more or less. When a true Shia has problem or has joy, this condition is reflected in the heart of Imam alayhi salam. There can be also the other way around. If we are good Shia, when our Imam is happy, we feel happy. We understand it in a general way. For example, this is birth occasion of for example, Rasulullah, Ahlul Bayt are happy, we are happy. This is Demaisa, for example, one of the Imams, they are sad, we are sad. Yahzanuna lehuznana wa yafrahuna lefarahna. But there is another way. Today maybe there is no sad occasion. But Imam Zaman for some reason is sad. Maybe he has lost 
one of his great helpers maybe a marja has passed away imam is sad we don't know what has happened but if we are true shia we feel some sadness in our heart so it can be from this side as well but for sure it's more from the other side because they have greater love for us like sometimes children don't happen don't understand what happens to parents but parents understand what happens to children so let us see some of the hadith that we have in this regard and understand better love and concern that they have for us the first hadith that I want to share with you is in Basairu Darajat Muhammad ibn al Hassan al Safar, the author of Basairu Darajat, on the page 279 and 280, quotes this hadith. What is the title of this chapter? Babun fil a'imma. إِنَّهُمْ يَعْرِفُونَ مَنْ يَمْرِضُ مِنْ شِيَعَتِهِمْ وَيَحْزَنُونَ وَيَدْعُونَ وَيُؤَمِّنُونَ عَلَى دُعَاءِ شِيَعَتِهِمْ وَهُمْ غُيَّبٌ عَنْهُمْ The title of this chapter is very interesting. And normally these titles are inspired by the hadith in that chapter. Imams alayhim salam know who among their Shia becomes ill? They become sad. They pray for. They say Amin to the dua of the Shia while they are Ghaib. The Shia are not with them, but uh, still. They become sad if they are sad, they become happy if they are happy, for example. They make dua for them, and if Shia make dua, they say Amin, they ask Allah to accept their duas. So this is the title of this chapter. The first hadith is what I want to share with you today. Abu Sa'id al-Khuddari quotes from a person called Romail. This person says, I had fever. I was not feeling well. But then on the day of Juma, Friday, I felt better. This was during the time of Amirul Mu'minin alayhi salam. So he says, فَوَجَدْتُ مِنْ نَفْسِي خِفَّةً فِي يَوْمِ الْجُمْعَةِ On the day of Jumu'ah, I was better. وَقُلْتُ لَا أَعْرِفُ شَيْئًا أَفْضَلُ مِنْ أُفِيذَ عَلَى نَفْسِي مِنَ الْمَاءِ وَأُصَلِّ خَلْفَ أَمِيرُ الْمُؤْمِنِ I said, I don't know anything better than making a ghusl to the day of Jumu'ah put some water on me and then go and say prayer behind Amirul Mu'mineen alayhi salam. Fafa'altu. So I did the same. Thumma jaitu ila al-masjid. Falamma sa'ada Amirul Mu'mineen alayhi salam and minbar a'ada alayya zalik. When Imam sat on minbar or uh, went on top of minbar uh, perhaps he was not sitting because a sa'ada sa'ada means to climb for giving jum'ah sermons my fever started again anyway I remained I didn't want to lose this opportunity now that I'm here, alhamdulillah, so I stayed. When Amirul Mu'mineen 
finished and went to his place I went with him he said ya Romayla ra'aytuka wa anta mutashabbikun ba'duka fi ba'd although there were many people there but Imam said to Romayla I saw you were in strange condition the expression here mutashabbikun ba'duka fi ba'd as if you know some of you has gone inside another like you know a kind of uh, net shabaka net perhaps he was you know i don't know squeezing his hands and something to just remain there but had pain romaila says i told him yes and i mentioned this story to him and why I decided still to go to Salat al Jum'ah to say my prayer behind Imam. Then Amir al Mu'minin said this Ya Rumayla, Laysa min Mu'minin yamrid illa maridna bi maradi, Wala yahzan illa hazanna bi huzni. وَلَا يَدْعُوا إِلَّا آمَنَّا لِدْعَائِهِ وَلَا يَسْكُتْ إِلَّا دَعَوْنَا لَهِ There is no mu'min who becomes ill unless we become ill. As I said yes in the previous session, means we also feel the pain. No mu'min becomes hazin, hozn, means grief unless we become hazin and we also have sadness because of him his sadness or her sadness makes us sad no woman makes dua unless we say amin no woman is silent because there are times maybe this person cannot even make dua <laughs> or for any reason we should make dua but sometimes you know we are silent they pray for us. We pray for them. I said, O Amir al Mu'minin, may Allah make me your ransom. Is this for any person who is in this Qasr al Imara, in this place that? You know, you are leading the Ummah. Araita man kana fi atraf al earth. What about people who are in far places, in different corners of the world? Amir al Mumin said, Ya Rumayla, Laysa yagib anna mu'minun fi sharq al earth, wala fi gharbha. No mu'min, no believer is hidden from us. Whether they are in the east or the west. Hujja of Allah is a human being, of course. They are human beings. But to be able to function as Hujja of Allah, one of the things that Allah gives them and equips them with is knowledge. In some discussions about Imama, we have explained the concept of shaheed witness. With every generation of mankind, there must be a witness who is aware of what they do. And on the day of judgment, Allah brings them and they be a witness about what they have done, what they have believed, etc. You cannot have someone with such position as Hujj of Allah, someone as witness, and then not knowing what is happening. Allah is wise. If gives a position to someone, gives also the requirements. So, Imams in general, Hujjaj of Allah in general, but in a particular way, 
امام مهدی اجل الله تعالی فرجه الشریف they are aware of us whether we live in the east or the west what we go through our sadness, difficulties, tragedies, etc. When we make dua, they say Amin. And they pray for us. Inshallah, one of the things that we will talk about it is that Imam Mahdi prays for Mu'mineen. The second hadith in this chapter, which has only two hadiths, is from Abi Arabiyah. When we do was, we say Abi Rabi'i Shami. An Abi Rabi'i Shami. Qala qultu la Abi Abdullah alayhi salam. I told Imam Sadiq alayhi salam that I have heard something from Amr ibn Ishaq he wanted to check with Imam Sadiq Imam Sadiq said to him اعرضه present it قال دخل أمير المؤمنين عليه السلام فرأى صفرة في وجهه he went to visit Imam Ali and he saw some yellow uh, you know, color in his face, on his face, some yellowish, you know, was maybe he had fever. Amirul Mu'minin said to him, now he's asking, he says, I heard this, that Amirul Mu'minin asked him, Ma hadhe sofra? What is this yellowish, what is this? condition فَذَكَرَ وَجَعَنْدَ he said I have this illness Amir al-Mumnir told him إِنَّا لَنَفْرَحُ لِفَرَحِكُمْ وَنَحْزَنُ لِحُزْنِكُمْ وَنَمْرَضُ لِمَرَضِكُمْ وَنَدْعُوا لَكُمْ فَتَدْعُونَ فَنُؤَمِّنْ Um, Amir al told him, we become happy when you are happy. We become sad when you are sad. We become ill when you are ill. We pray for you. Or you pray, we say, Amin. We ask Allah to answer. Then, Amr ibn Ishaq, who had quoted this hadith says I understood but the only thing that he didn't understand was how can we say dua and you say amin maybe we are far because normally when you are in the presence of imam imam is making dua so when you are making dua they say amin is when you are absent Imam said, Sawa'un alayna, inna sawa'un alayna, al-badi wal-hadir. Those who are present or absent are the same for us. So, this is what Abu Rabi al-Shami, and when you make majroor, you say Abu Rabi al-Shami. So, Abu Rabi al-Shami, Ask Imam Sadiq al Salam, I heard such a thing happen between Amr ibn Ishaq and Amir al Mu'mineen. He wanted to check with Imam Sadiq al Salam. Faqal Abu Abdullah alayhi salam, Sadaq Amr. Imam Sadiq said, Amr is right. Yes, there was such a thing between him and Amir al Mu'mineen alayhi salam. So this confirms what we have also in this event about Rumayla and what we have in other places. Now, this was from Basairu Darajat by Muhammad ibn al-Hassan al-Saffar. 
The next thing I want to share with you is from Biharul Anwar. In Biharul Anwar, there is a hadith from Imam Rida alayhi salam. Ibn Abi Najran says, uh, let me give you also the reference volume 65 page 167 and 168 of Biharul Anwar by the late Allah Majlisi Ibn Abi Najran qala sami'tu Abu al-Hasan alayhi salam this very beautiful hadith it has lots of points he says, I heard Imam Raza alayhi salam. Yaqul, man aada shi'atana faqad aadana, wa man walahum faqad walana. Whoever fights our Shia is fighting us. Whoever uh, is with them is with us. And then Imam continues and we have made some reference to this hadith before and says ma min ahadin min shi'atina yamrith illa marithna umradna li maradhi wa laghtamma illa ghtamamna li ghammi wa la yafrah illa farahna li farah Since we have already discussed this hadith, which has lots of beautiful points before, I just mention only this sentence as a reminder, because we are bringing evidence for this point from different hadiths. None of our Shia becomes ill unless we become ill for his illness or her illness. None of our Shia becomes sad unless we become sad. None of them becomes happy unless we become happy for their happiness none of them is absent from us whether they are in the east of the earth or the west the next hadith is again about Imam Raza alayhi salam and it is about dua that Imams make for us and also connection through the heart because this is very beautiful concept I thought maybe I mention some other hadith also which are here available in Al-Kafi because in this series we want to understand Imams better especially the connection with the heart and we want to also know more about Imam Mahdi Sharif, who is Imam of our time. Shaykh Kulayni in volume 4, page 717, according to this edition that I am using, it's volume 4 of Al Kafi, page 717. He has a chapter. He says, Babun Nadir. This is a chapter which has hadith which he doesn't give a certain title. And these are hadith which are somehow special, one were not included in other ch chapters. He puts them here. The first hadith is in this chapter from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam. Ala ibn Fudayl wa Hamad ibn Uthman. They say, you know, that they heard from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam. Unzur qalbak. If you are two friends, when you have some issue in your heart with your friend the love the affection that you had before 
He's not the same. Unzur qalba. Check your heart. Look at your heart. If in your heart you don't have love for your friend, for your companion, one of you has made a mistake at least, has done something wrong. فَإِذَا أَنْكَرَ صَاحِبَكْ فَإِنَّ أَحَدَكُمَا قَدْ أَحْدَثَ If your heart finds it not plausible and pleasant to think about the other person. So one of you has done something. Sometimes both, sometimes one. Either so you cannot always say he did mistake, he has done something wrong. Maybe you did something wrong that you have lost the love for a moment or a moment. A sister for a sister, brother for a brother. So one at least side has done something wrong. What does this show? This shows that there is existential connection between the hearts. between the souls. We have a hadith which says in al arwa junudun mujannad faman ta'arafa minha atalafa souls or spirits are like organized groups and armies. If they have ma'rifa, if they know each other, even when they, for the first time they meet, there is attraction. This ma'rifa is not an acquaintance in dunya that you have seen this person, you know, many times. No. If there is acquaintance between the spirits, the souls get connected. If there is no acquaintance with the souls because they think differently or I don't know they have different tendencies etc different characteristics they don't get close to each other they don't feel close to each other they need to force themselves some people you know you naturally love to be with them some people you have to push yourself so there's existential relation between hearts between souls this hadith talks about this. The next hadith, hadith number two. Salih ibn al-Hakam says, Sami'tu rajulan yas'alu Aba Abdullah alayhi salam. I heard someone asking Imam Sadiq alayhi salam. Faqala. This was his question. الرجل يقول أودك فكيف أعلم أنه يودني؟ My question is this. Oh, you know, he said to Imam Sadiq. So my question is: Someone says, "I love you. I have mawadda for you. Mawadda is, you know, love of friendship, mutual love, affection. So someone says, "I love you. I like you." How can I know that he is right? He is truthful. كيف أعلم أنه يودني؟ فقال امتحن قلبك. Examine your own heart. فإن كنت تودّه فإنه يودك. If you have love for him, he has love for you. If you feel something positive about that person, it means that he also feels something positive about you. This again shows that there is a kind of link, existential link between hearts, between the souls. The souls which match each other, they have positive feeling with each other. Of course, I will explain later that there can be exceptions also. But if we are in good condition, if our heart, our spirit is in good condition, 
if our sensitivity has not gone away, we should feel this. The third hadith is from Mas'adat ibn al-Yasa'a. He says, قُلْتُ لَأَبِي عَبْدِ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ جَعْفَرِ ibn Muhammad عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ إِنِّي وَاللَّهِ لَأُحِبُّكَ Mas'adah says, I told Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, by Allah, I love you. He said to Imam Sadiq, Wallahi la uhibbuk. Fa'atraqa thumma rafa'a ra'asaha. Imam alayhi salam first bent his head, brought, lowered his head, and then raised it, and said, Sadaqta. Ya Abba Bishr. Imam said, you are right. So Imam looked into his heart. Of course, heart of the soul, not heart of the body. So he paid attention to his heart and said, you are right. Then he said, Sal Qalbaka Ask your own heart about what in my heart is from love for you. So if you want to know how much I love you, look at your heart. You told me you love me, I looked at my heart and it was correct. And if you want to see how much I like you, look at your heart. My heart informed me about what is for me in your heart. So I could see by looking at my heart, that you love me because heart has connection with the heart now we reach hadith number four which is the hadith from Imam Raza that I wanted to mention but uh, because I said this chapter is beautiful I mentioned the previous three hadith this is chapter about Nawadir from al Kafi, volume four and now hadith number four is from Imam Raza salam. Hassan ibn Jahm says, قُلْتُ لَأَبِ الْحَسَنَ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ لَا تَنْسَنِي مِنَ الدُّعَى Please don't forget me in your prayers. Please pray for me. What a great honor and gift if Imam prays for us. Even if believers pray for us, is great. If godly scholars pray for us, that's great. But if Imam prays for us, it's great. So he says, I told Imam alayhi salam, please don't forget to pray for us me la tansani from nisyan la tansani please don't forget me in dua prayer imam alayhi salam said wa ta'lamu anni ansak or in some words he said wa ta'lam anni ansak you think we forget you It's not that because now you said, you know, please pray for me, I will pray for you. A mom could say, okay, I pray for you. But he said, don't forget me in your prayer. As if a mom is forgetting and now is going to remember or trying to remember. Sometimes we want to remember, but we forget again. Is a mom like that? No. Imam is 
naturally praying for you. He's not forgetting you. He for doesn't forget it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and doesn't forget people that he has responsibility towards them. He has love for them. It's part of his relation with Allah to look after people. قَالَ فَتَفَكَّرْتُ فِي نَفْسِي Hassan ibn Jam says, then I started thinking, I didn't say anything, but inside, fi nafsi, in my soul, I started thinking. Qultu huwa yad'u li shi'atihi wa ana min shi'atihi. He says, I told myself that Imam is praying for his Shia. And I am one of his Shia. So he must be praying for me. Therefore, in response to his question, do you think we forget you? I said, no. Alto la. La Tansani. <laughs> you don't forget me. So, Imam just asked him a question, but when he thought, he found out the answer. No, you don't forget me. So his knowledge increased by reflecting on what he knew with the hint of Imam alayhi salam. Qala wa kayfa alim tadhalik. Imam Raza alayhi salam said, how did you know this? قُلْتُ إِنِّي مِنْ شِيَعَتِكَ وَإِنَّكَ تَدْعُوا لَهُمْ He said, I said to Imam, I am from your Shia, one of your Shia, and you pray for them. So you're not going to forget me. فَقَالَ هَلْ عَلِمْتَ بِشَيْءٍ غَيْرَهَا لَا Imam Raza said, did you also know anything other than this? So, ad in addition to this, did you know anything else? Qala qultullah. He said, no. Then Imam Raza salam taught him a rule. Qala idha aradta an ta'lama ma laka indi. Whenever you want to know, what is for you and the with me? If you want to know how much I love you, how much I remember you, Fanzur, look at Elamali and Dak. Look at what is there for me with you. If you want to see how much love I have for you, Look at how much love you have for me. If you want to see how much I remember you, look at how much you remember me. Of course, this is the minimum. This is the minimum. Why I say this is minimum? Because it's impossible you remember Imam and Imam doesn't remember you. Or you love Imam and Imam doesn't love you. But there is great chance that you may forget Imam and Imam still remembers you. You may not have great love, but Imam has great love for you. Like a child, uh, uh, you know, child and father or mother. It's impossible their love and concern for children would be less than ch children's love and concern for them. Imams are in such a position that they would certainly have great love, remembrance, attention for their followers.
The next and last hadith in this chapter, uh, five hadith in this chapter, is again I remind you, it's in Al-Kafi, volume four. Jarrah al quotes from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam. Unzur qalbak. فَإِنْ أَنْكَرَ صَاحِبَكْ فَعْلَمْ أَنَّ أَحَدَكُمَا قَدْ أَحْدَثْ Look at your heart. If your heart finds your friend unfamiliar, I mean not pleasant, then know that one of you has done something, something wrong, at least one side. I told you there can be exceptions, so I want to clarify this. We should not take our feelings as proof. Because we may not be always in good condition. Sometimes our heart is clouded, is affected by different things, and therefore you may not have clear communication with another heart. Sometimes even people suffer from some mental problems, illnesses. They become very, you know, pessimistic. They become very negative about everyone, very suspicious about everyone. So they should not say, I feel bad towards this person, so he must also have bad feeling towards me. <laughs> or as soon as you have good feeling about someone, you know, you should not think that definitely that person loves you. There can be other factors also. Yes, if we were very alert, if we were spiritually very high, or at least in the innocence condition, you know, we had this innocence of Fitra, we could trust our feelings more. But since heart is very changeable, then heart is not hujja. Yeah, Aql is hujja. Heart is not hujja. Although many times we ask to refer to your heart, but uh, still it's not hujja. You have to check it against Quran, Sunnah, Aql. We cannot just trust on heart. But, for example, between you and Imam Zaman, how much you love him? Be 100% sure that he loves you more than this. If you love him a lot, certainly he loves you a lot and even more. This much we are sure. But if, God forbid, you don't feel love towards Imam, this doesn't mean that he doesn't have love towards you. There is a blockage in your heart, but he has no blockage. There is a beautiful hadith that I would like to end this session with this hadith, because inshallah in the next session we will talk about prayer. Prayer of Imam out of love for Shia. This hadith is from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam about this issue of you know love and rahmah mercy for people. In Ghaiba of sorry in Biharul Anwar volume 47 Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says Wallahi inni Arhamu bikum min anfusikum. Not only they love us as we love them and even more, they love us more than we love ourselves. So far we are saying they love us as we love them. They love us more than we love them. 
But now we say they love us more than we love ourselves. They are kind with us more than we are kind with ourselves. They are merciful with us more than we are merciful to ourselves. Wallahi, by Allah, inni arhamu bikum min anfusikum. I am more merciful towards you than you towards yourself. And this is why they have velaya, because velaya is a matter of love and mercy. Why an nabiyya awla bil mu'minina min anfusihim? Why he has more authority over us than us over ourselves? Because he has concern for our interest more than we have for our own interest. Why a child, for example, always needs consent of the guardians, of the parents? Because the child may take risk. The child may not be aware about his own long-term interest. Parents are more concerned. Imams love us more than we love ourselves. They are more concerned about our interests than we are because we are short-sighted. We don't know that much. Plus, we get pressurized, you know, with different things. They want our maslaha more than what we want. They want bright future for us more than what we want. We need just to cooperate. We need just to trust, listen, and move forward. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase our love for himself and for his awliya, inshaAllah. In the third night in many majalis in Iran, they remember Lady Ruqayya salamu alayha. So we try to end our session with a remembrance of this innocent and this immaculate daughter of Abu Abdullah alayhi salam. We know that Amir al Mu'minin alayhi salam had a special attention to the orphans even in his last and final will. He said, Allah, Allah, fil aytam. He asked everyone, his children who and whoever receives his message, to be very careful about orphans. He used to look after orphans of Kufa himself. Kanbar says that according to what we have in the book Kashful Yaqeen and Fadail Amir al-Mu'minin alayhi salam it says that Qambar one day followed Amir al-Mu'minin sorry one night followed Amir al-Mu'minin alayhi salam Imam heard that someone is following him said who are you he said I am Qambar Imam said, what do you want? He said, if you allow me, I want to be with you and carry these goods that you are taking. Imam said, you can come with me, but I must carry myself. It's very important that whenever you do something for poor people, for needy people, for orphans, etc., if you manage to be at least sometimes the last hand from which they receive this. You may not always be able to do that. And everyone who occurs in this line and helps from the donor till it is received by the beneficiary, everyone gets baraka, everyone gets reward. But there is something special if you yourself meet those who are in need and with your own hand and with love and respect you give them. Imam wanted to do this himself, not that he asked you know, people to do for him. 
So Ambar went with Imam and he says, I saw that Amirul Mu'minin alayhi salam entered a house and fed the orphans, gave them water, and then he let them ride on his back. He's Amirul Mu'mineen, he's Khalifatul Muslimin. He's someone that has uh, lots of you know, soldiers, has an army, but he wants to do this himself and he is happy that an orphan goes on his back, rides on his back, and for some time forgets that he, he has no father. Kambar says, when I saw this, I lost my patience and said, you are Amirul Mu'mineen. What are you doing? Imam said, I want these children to feel the gap of their father less. So this is the way Amirul Mu'mineen was treating orphans. But how some people treated children of Amirul Mu'mineen? How the so-called Khalifatul Muslimin treated the orphans of family of Amirul Mu'mineen? Lady Ruqayya very much missed her father and this reached perhaps its peak in Sham. She was asking to meet her father. She was asking about and for the news about her father. She was restless. So when Yazid heard the cries of Lady Ruqayya and asked for reason, they said, this is daughter of Hussein salam, asking for her father. He didn't think, how can I comfort her? How can you know we make her you know, forget, for example, the pain of being an orphan, etc., to some extent. No, he just wanted to silence her so that he can enjoy his uh, sleep. And he wanted to do it in the quickest, easiest way for him. And perhaps he wanted also to do it in a way that would bring more pain. So, without any preparation without any uh, you know, warning, without any consultation with the family of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, he sent in a covered tray the head of Abu Abdullah alayhi salam, as if, for example, they are sending some food. Lady Ruqayya, when saw this and removed the cover, saw the head of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. She took the head and put on her little chest. And the poet describes this moment. The poet imagines a conversation between Lady Ruqayya and her father. You know, when children, in the absence of parents, they suffer. When they meet the parents, they start 
explaining, uh, explaining to them and complaining to them what happened to them. آندم که من از ناق افتادم و قش کردم بابا تو کجا بودی از ما تو جدا بودی My dear father that moment that I fell down from back of the camel and became unconscious Where were you? You were away and far from us. Then the poet says that Imam replied, On dam ke tu az naq uftadi yo qash kardi, man bar sar nay budam o ba tu hame ja budam. My dear Ruqayya, The moment that you fell down from back of the camel and became unconscious, I was with you, but I was on the spear. I was always with you and watching you. Allah la'natullah ala al-qawm al-zalameen. Fasayya'lamu al-ladheena zalamu ayyamun ghalaban yan ghalaboon. Oh Allah, please. Help us to look after orphans, look, us, look after needy people, look after children with a special need so that we can follow the example of Ahlul Bayt alayhimussalam. Please protect our families, our children. and our community and all humanity from calamities of Akhir zaman Please give shifa to all people who are ill. Please send rahma and maghfirah to all mu'mineen who have passed away, especially those who have rights upon us. And please bless our parents who are alive with health and dignity and joy. And those who have passed away, please be very forgiving and generous with them. And please make our Imam Zaman happy with us and accept his du'as for us and for his faraj. Amin, Ya Rabbil Alameen.